Now, when we say exploit, simply what do we mean? Because I'm ordained, ordination. Now, here's the one of fact, let's talk about ordination. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. There are things that God has ordained for you and I because God is a God of planning. God is a God of purpose. God is a God that has a mission. Let us make man in our image. After all, like that. He didn't say let us make man so that they can be floating around. Or let us make man so that they're going for soccer. That I'm not saying I'm against soccer. But let us make man so that he can just be going here and there. He doesn't have anything to do. Let us make man. Okay, why? In our image and our likeness. Okay, what are they going to do? Let them have dominion. Excuse me. Did you see that? So there's a purpose. Not that let us make man because I'm bored. Let us make man because I don't know what I'm doing. Let them have dominion. So let me have let me prophesy over you. Even as we prepare for our dominion meeting next week, next week for all of our hundred percent triumph, they know themselves. From today, you begin to experience dominion. You know, John the Baptist is coming in the spirit. I think it's 17. In the spirit and the power of Elijah. But it was not, I mean, was, uh, we, we, were told, we were told about that even in chapter 3. So, it's coming in the spirit, spirit of Elijah. In the power, power of Elijah. Now, Elijah was the man that called fire down to roast 450 prophets of Baal. Think about that. Think about that. Did you think that's mega exploit? That is mega exploit. Elijah was a person who raised the dead for free. Hmm? He raised the dead. Widow of Zarephath. Elijah was the person that said that as the Lord liveth, the cruise of oil and the barrel of flour will not cease until the day that God sent forth rain on the earth. We're talking about great feet of Elijah. So John the Baptist came in that spirit and that power. My goodness. And the Bible says, you, if you are the least in the kingdom, you are greater than John the Baptist. So that makes you somebody that is ordained to do mega exploit. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Look at, look at, look at Isaac. Let me tell you one thing. Number one. Now, he said, and Isaac sowed in the land and received in that same year, Genesis 26, 12 to 14. He received in that same year. So you are somebody that need to have dividend of God the same year. So this same year, 2023, you will have the testimony and the blessing of the Lord. Now, in verse 14, and the Philistines envied him. Philistine is a nation, a country. They were envying a man. The man is, a, is greater than a nation. That's Isaac. That looks like exploit. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We appreciate you for yet another opportunity to be in your presence. It's the second Sunday in the month of Ishaka, the month of our reward, the month where we are high, we'll be hired. I had for your glory, he said, that no man be idle. Let no man be idle. That was why at the age of 12, Jesus was saying, I must be by my father's business. Lord, we just want to thank you. We give you all the praise. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the spirit of Jesus. Thank you for the power of Jesus. Thank you for the glory of Jesus. Thank you for the light of Jesus. Thank you for the word of Jesus. Thank you for the anointing of Jesus. Thank you for the mercy of Jesus. Thank you for the spirit of Jesus. Thank you for the confidence of Jesus. Thank you for the faith of Jesus. Thank you for what you have done in our life. Standing here, it is you. Divine provision, divine protection, divine lifting, divine blessing. Lord, we thank you. Divine intervention, divine involvement, divine elevation, divine promotion. You are our confidence for the future. If not for you, it's like we have no future. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your name. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your glory. We thank you because you never let us down. We thank you for upholding our soul in life. Take all the glory all through the months and months and months and weeks and days and days without number. Since the first day we landed 
in our mother's womb when we were coming from you on an assignment on the earth. You've watched over us. We are grateful. We are grateful. Even when we don't believe, you cannot be denied. You cannot be denied. God cannot deny himself. Even man do not believe. Let every other man therefore be a liar. And let our God be true. Thank you for this platform, Hypersonic Church. Thank you for what you have done so far. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you're teaching us, what we are learning. Holy Spirit, have your way. Be exalted, be glorified. In Jesus' name, we give God praise. Amen. Now, you're welcome to the second week of uh, uh, the month of Ishaka, which is the month of September. It's a glorious month. It's the ninth month. Take it very important. Why? Because there must be a delivery. The hack of the covenant that Moses built was built for nine months. Now, it, it took three months for um, Obedidom to receive that hack. Three plus nine, twelve. He took that three, that hack in his own house for three months and blessing flows. That is to let you know in the name of Jesus, as you receive the hack and the hack is completed in your life in September, as it were, delivery of the vision. That means your October, your November, your December, as the ark dwell and continued in your life. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. And verse 12. God Almighty will manifest his blessing in your life. Now, you might not even know it. You might not recognize it. Everybody around you will be talking about it. They will talk about the goodness of God in your life, the blessing of God in your life, the glory of God in your life, the power of God in your life. So let it be in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it will be so in my life in the name of Jesus. I'm getting to realize it more and more that need to start speaking that same prophecy into my life now when i think about the, the so much testimonies especially even from outside GRE family i realize i need to be saying that to me oh my, my children i'm telling you oh god and it's working we give god praise amen now we are here for a great time today so we're going to be having um our announcement and then uh um, Jeremy Mission Square, plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. Don't forget what Jesus said in Matthew 25. In that day, I will separate the goat on the left and the sheep will be on the right. And then I will tell the sheep when I was when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was lonely, you visited me. When I was prison, you came. When I was uh, naked, you clothed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. And they're going to say, oh God, we are shocked. We did not even know you came. We did not even know you were in our kitchen. We don't even know that you are. We did not. So why are you blessing us this way? Why did you put us in heaven? Why do you want us to be on your right side? What have we done? God says, in as much as you have done this to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. That's why I keep saying that anybody that wants to see Jesus, just see the word. He said, you have done it unto me. And yet I have not seen Jesus before. Like, oh, design, I wish I have. I've seen his angels. I've been. I've seen him in vision, but I want to see him physically too, so that he can touch me like this, so that me and him can hold our hands. But the word of God, if you can see God's word, you have seen Jesus. And he said, the guys on the left, man, he cast them into outer darkness. I mean, <laughs> that's bad. You will not be cast into outer darkness because of neglect of these things. You are going to see some of the clips of GRM Mission Square because of neglect insensitivity a little fox that spoiled the vine things that we do not even you know give attention to might be something that is hindering us let's take note of that and we give god all the praise in jesus name and then after that we're gonna have our testimonies our testimonies are very important and uh, we um the the, the 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 spirit of the prophet is the word of testimony so the revelations told us the, the, the testimony of Jesus sound to be his prophecies and his prophesying is a pointer to you we overcome by the blood of the Lamb by the word of our testimony with the blood of our life unto death you know and so that's one of the things that makes us to be an overcomer the words of our testimony you have to it makes it come it seals you as an overcomer and then that's the spirit of God is the testimony of Jesus that's the prophecy, is the testimony 
testimony of Jesus. And, and so those testimonies are very important. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you once again as we get ready for your word. Please manifest your power and your glory. Even for this theme that you have given unto us this um, month, I am ordained to do mega exploits for Jesus Christ. All right, the Lord be with you in Jesus' name. Amen.
one, so I pull up in a new truck. Yeah, going to church on the sun and morning. I call up on my friends, tell them, come, let's wash it. We gotta give thanks to the Lord to for the Lord. all the big plans that we had growing up. Came true, that's true. Look at me now, I'm a winner. Blessing steady flowing like a river. Okay, I work hard all day, but the hand of the Lord make it easy all day. All day, come rain, come sun. All the blessings I've been getting so much. Take a look at me now. now. Look at where I'm living now. Yeah. Everything I need, I get it now. now. Look, look at where I'm living now. All the days of my life, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. In the day, in the night, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. Take a look. Father, we thank you for how thus far you've helped us. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the power of your word. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here, uh, from being at the other hand where people are hearing us, and you have pierced our hearts and our ears. Our ears are married to Jesus. We are Simeons who has an ear to hear, and you are the one who gives us an hearing here. And you're going to give us an hearing here, not to hear what a man is saying. This is not going to be received as a lecture. It's going to be an hear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying for the, from the oracle of God. He said, we speak, I speak as the oracle of Jesus. Repeating what God has said to make it clear in the ears and the heart of your people. And in my ears and in my heart, we receive this in Jesus' name. I am ordained to do mega exploit part two or four so we have an ordination and our ordination is mega exploits we try to define what mega is it's large it's huge it's great an exploit means something notable notable deed there was a uh, there was a notable miracle in scripture he said a notable miracle i think we talked about that last week has been done and we cannot deny it <laughs> that's an exploit what shall we do to these men? We need to stop them. For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jesus. And we cannot deny it. A kind of miracle that you cannot deny. Lord, we thank you. We thank you because that's what God packaged for you and I. Something that cannot be denied. That people want to erase. That they want to, they want to try to hide it. They want to try to prevent it. Such is the resurrection of Jesus. You know, they said they bribe people. They bribe them. They said, let us give you some bribe. We're going to give you some money. Just say that this thing did not happen. Please, we are too scared. Matthew chapter 27. And, and up to today, you can't deny it that he did not resurrect. And a kind of undeniable blessing, miracles, God is going to do it in our lives in Jesus' name. That's what you are ordained to do. Now, 
Imagine Paul, Paul, whose handkerchief and apron begin to cast out demons. His clothing, my goodness, and God wrought special miracles. The first one was notable miracles. That's an exploit. This one was special miracles by the hands. Hey, that's why your hands are very important. The hands that obey, the hands that love God, the hands that put things together by the hands of Paul. What happened in verse 12? So that from his body, you have never seen this before. This is, this is nothing sh cut short of, of, of exploit from his body. What kind of doctor can do this? Not even from the bed, not even from Harvard, not even from John Hopkins. Tell me what kind of doctor can do this kind of a thing that from his body were brought onto the sick handkerchief. I think people will rush people, they will rush sick, rush sick people to the surgical rooms to have surgery. But for Paul, he said, no, I don't need to even touch them. My handkerchief can get the job done. Sick he said, he said, handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. In the name of Jesus, even as you are hearing me now, if you put that phone on your head or in your body or on your wallet, anything you need in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the word that I'm speaking will penetrate it and bring forth answer in Jesus' name. Because the word of God is quick and powerful. That's why we, when we talk about mega exploit, we cannot but emphasize the power of the word. There is no mega exploit without the word. Because that is the custodian of exploit. The word is the custodian of exploit. We talked about it during a, a GR, at Jerry Center. When we mention the fact that Jesus suspended the natural law. That's an exploit. That's why everybody's talking about it. If you are in a boat, nobody talks about it. <laughs> nobody talks about the fact that you are in a boat. But when you see a man walking on water, everybody has to talk about it. He will catch children's attention. He will catch the world's attention. He will catch anywhere in the world. It's an exploit. That's why, you know, when you look at the way... Uh, the flyer for the, for the month, you see that we're talking about space. That's an exploit. Exploit is something beyond natural. Man, Jesus was walking on the sea. It's not beyond, I mean, you are here on that. You are taking a flight to Australia. Some people are taking a flight to the moon. <laughs> Some are living in the planet, out of the world. You are in the world talking about food, talking about war. They are looking at the world like a ball. Outside the world, they are not in the world. They are not on the earth, I'm sorry. They are not on the earth. They are outside the earth watching everybody. I mean, they are not watching everybody, but they are looking at the balls of the earth. That's an exploit. That's why people invest billions and billions of dollars into space science. It's a space force right now because it looks like exploit. But that's, the, that's for the world. That's for the earth. There are exploits in the kingdom. That is why they... That the key thing for us to know, to identify, is those who do know their God. Exploit is not just something that is packaged for pastors, for bishops, for, um, uh, uh, for apostles, or for somebody that's like, you know, uh, uh, a teacher, evangelist. Exploits are things packaged for those who do know their God. Paul, that I'm talking about, whose handkerchief who are doing exploits, says that I may know him. Why won't he do exploits? That I may know him. And those who do know their God. This is a man that is not, your fight, I'm not after your fight. Your struggle, I'm not after your struggle. Your concern, I'm not after your concern. I want to know Jesus. I want to know him. I want to know God. Who is God? I want to know his eyes. I want to know his heart. I want to know his feelings. I want to know his thoughts. I want to know what he likes, what he doesn't like. I want to know everything about God. And the more of God is doing, is knowing. Jesus, you are just teaching me a lot of things, man. The more of God that he begins to know, the more exploit he began to do. 
This is very, very, very important. And in our days, if you want to know God, we want to know his word, his word, his word, his word. So that is to say there must be a passionate thirst and hunger on our side for God's word. It, why? Because the word that we, the, the word of God is what, what we manifest exploit. Because exploit is a function of power. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Exploit is a function of power. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. When you, when you have the revelation knowledge of God's word. When you are after God's word, you are searching his word. You are passionate about his word. The way you are passionate about knowing technology, business, IT, and all those things, which, which, are, which are a form of a knowledge, they're a form of wisdom, but they are subsub, subservient wisdom. They can't be compared to the wisdom of God. That's why a professor in, in business school in Harvard has credits. He's borrowing. As somebody who has never been to school who know God's word is lending to nations. People like Solomon. <laughs> Amen. I don't know which school David went to, but David is, uh, is in money. Man, I'm telling. Abraham, money. Uh, Isaac, Jacob. And they have never. I mean, so uh, it, 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 the word has limited many people. The, the, the knowledge of the word, that's what we, we pay money for it. We pay, we pay tuition. It's okay. We pay tuition. And then with all the tuition we pay, you see somebody who's a pharmacist who is dying of cancer. When the pharmacist die of cancer, I mean, is it that he doesn't know, she doesn't know, or he doesn't know medication? When a, when a, when a surgeon die of heart attack, when cardiologists die of liver disease, what is it they don't know? They know everything, but they cannot do exploit in their life. From today, I prophesy over me, my wife, my children, yourself. We begin to do exploit in every dimension, in every areas of life, because we begin to be passionate about God's word in Jesus' name. For the word of God is quick and powerful. That's the power you need for exploit. That's the power you need for exploit. It's powerful. The word of God is quick and powerful. The word. Now, look at the young man that, I don't know what happened to his, to, no, sorry, it's not him. They say it's not him. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a young woman that has his intestine cut with all kinds of things. And a man too was taken by someone that knows a young lady, you know, or, you know, walking there, you know, and the, 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 the intestine was popping out. You got the pain and all that kind of thing. How can this person get out of this place the following day? When they're supposed to be there for months? When the mantle was there? Now, I didn't go there, but the power of God was there. That's an exploit. That's the exploit God wants for you. It shocks the doctor. It shocks everybody. You see, so he said the word of God is quick. It quickens anything that is that we want to die. So, you see, people, they are weak, they are weary, they are, the brain cannot think, cannot reason, cannot proven, cannot provide or provide solutions to problems. Problem is all around everybody. The only thing we need is solution. So the word of God is the one that will quicken you for solution. My God. Look at the problem. What was the problem? We have 5,000 men. They were hungry. We don't know what to do. But the word, who is the word? Jesus in their midst knew what to do. And there was solution. The enemy was put to shame to the intent that a place where there is no food, they were able to gather 12 baskets filled with bread and fish. And the apostle put it on their head, as old as they are. And they were going, hey, young lad, where are you? Now follow me, follow me, the 12 of you. They were carrying it to his house. That is an exploit. Let me prophesy over me, my wife, my children, yourself. This particular month, God will launch you into financial exploit in Jesus' name. No, now, which school do you want to go? And they will teach you how to do that kind of a thing. There is no school. 
Now you see a king who is a king of a tribe in Israel, the tribe of Judah. His name was Jehoshaphat, right? His name was Jehoshaphat, and, it, it is, uh, and the enemies are coming to attack him. Three countries, like multitudes. What is he going to do? I mean, we have wars in our days, in our own days. And we look at wars going on. It's, it's, look at how, you know, people are oppressed in other countries and all that. You know, I'm not too much into, into all that. But, I mean, you, you, you read it in the news. But Jehoshaphat, okay, he said, Lord, I don't know what to do. He literally said it. But the word of God is quick. So it can be quickened. To be quickened does not mean it's fast. To be quickened means you come to a reality. You are jolted. Something just come up. God just reveals something to you. It's like a shock. It's like a lightning. It's like a revelation. Oh God. Now look at it. For we do not know what to do. Give me the scripture. We do not know what to do. I love it that they said that. They were brought down. How many people are looking at me today or watching this program that you don't know what to do regarding your job? You don't know what to do regarding your certification? You don't know what to do regarding making money? You don't know what to do regarding paying off your debt? You don't know what to do regarding being anointed? You don't even know what to do regarding the enemy that are confronting you? You don't know what to do regarding the projects ahead of you? You have four or five children they are going to school. You don't know what to do regarding their bills. Oh, God Almighty. Those who do know their God. In the name of Jesus. As you press to know God. To know his word. God is going to reveal to you what to do. And you will gain ascendancy over the same. In Jesus name. For we do not know what to do. That is the state for many Christians. We come to church. We don't know what to do. We know what to write. We know what to, where to visit. But we do not know what to do. It's okay. There are times in my life when I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But I don't stop there. We don't know what to do. It's not after we don't know what to do. It's not confronted with period. It's a comma. So, our eyes are on you. Who is the you? The word. Because the word is what we bring forth solution. Now, if... Remember that Peter took his eyes off Jesus? And he began, and the law just sees. The law floats, ceases. Immediately, he took his eyes off Jesus. We do not know what to do. How many people are watching me now? How many men are watching me now? How many grandfathers are watching me now? How many grandmothers are watching me now? How many young men are watching me now? How many young women are watching me now? How many people are watching me now? How many nations are watching me now? How many CEOs are watching me now? That you do not know what to do. Keep your eyes on the word. Our eyes, not our high. Two eyes are on you. And you know the end of the story. By 25, they're supposed to fight they never used any, as a matter of fact, they, they went to the war without taking any ammunitions. There was no ammo. There was no ammunitions with them. They went there to be gathering spoils, money, riches, everything. In verse 25, they were gathering. They gathered for three days. They called the place Beraka. Let me prophesy unto someone here. God will give you your own personal Beraka. He's going to come this September. In the name of Jesus. You know why we are reading this up to today? It was an exploit. Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder. Somebody that they were threatening you and the thing turned to money. What kind of a thing is this? And they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value more than they could take away. It's too much. My God. And that woman, that, that man left you and divorced you. 
God's going to surprise you in the name of Jesus. You do not know what to do regarding your family. You do not know what to do regarding accommodation, regarding job. And you are watching me right now and your eyes are on Jesus and you are pressing to knowing God. He's going to turn to an exploit for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh my God. That's the exploit we are talking about. We do not know what to do. But our eyes are on you. So the word of God is powerful. You need power for exploit. The word of God is also loaded with victories. Mm. You remember that, that immediately Israel came out of Egypt. They were dancing. They were appreciative. They were rejoicing. They were thanking God. So they created a platform for God to show up in their next battle. That's why it's important for all of us to be thankful. I mean, Moses was singing a whole Moses. Maybe he was at that time, I don't know, maybe at the age of 81, 82, you know, between 80 and, and 120. He was just rejoicing. He was just blessing God. At a, an 80-year-old man, that's, so Thanksgiving makes you to do exploit. You know, Miriam got tambourine by verses 15 and 16 and 13, and she called all the girls, and they composed songs. They were dancing. They were doing all those things. Everybody was rejoicing, you know, not knowing that immediately in this same chapter, the water that they were supposed to drink will be bitter. Now, if they have not thanked God initially, invested in thanking God when they hit that bitter water. How can what will we change? Okay, now you tell me the science today of checking bitter water to, to, to sweet water that you will need to use to feed three million people. Maybe they built a water, water storage tank you know, and the water is polluted or is contaminated. What science do we have in the world today that can quickly re reproduce or sanitize or detoxify that water? Ah, so they hit a place called Mara. And the water was bitter. But because they already thank God, God turned their bitter water to sweet water. In the name of Jesus, the exploit of thanksgiving we turn every bitter thing in your life, in my life, to sweet in Jesus' name. Ah, the waters were made sweet. How? By a tree. That's an exploit. <laughs> not by medication. Not by engineering work. Not by aquatic, whatever it is. No, a common tree. That is an exploit. A tree. By the time they got to chapter 17, somebody came to attack them. Hamalek. You know what makes them to win? Ordinary hands. That looks to me like an exploit. One man just did this. <laughs> okay, let there be... I mean, we've seen wars going on around us between nations. <laughs> let all the army and the military formations, the navy... The uh, Air Force, Marines, when they confront war, let them raise their hands. See whether they will win. <laughs> Look at this. That's the winning power. The hands of the Father. I mean, look now, don't take the picture home, please. Just leave it that way. Okay, now, how can you be fighting like we have war today? My goodness, man. And three people go to the mountain. And they raise their hand. <laughs> I mean, one person raised his hand. A father, a prophet, a leader, an overseer, and two people assisted him. And as long as he lifts his hand with the rod in his hand, the people begin to win. And all the people that came to fight them, they kill all of them. Now, I confirm you an uh, overcomer now, and a winner, and triumphant in the name of Jesus. You know why this is happening? Moses honored the word. He was a man that has gone to the mountain 
to write Genesis to Deuteronomy down. Just his hand. <laughs> Just his hand. So you can be in business and you are connected to Moses. As long as Moses is raising his hand, your business will prosper. You can be looking for a job and you are connected to Moses. As long as Moses is raising his hand, your jobs, you'll be having breakthrough in jobs, you'll be having remote jobs. That is an exploit. So I decree over your life, you just entered your season of exploit. In the name of Jesus. Hey, listen, they won't teach you this in uh, uh, the school of war. No military has this idea. I'm begging you, please listen. No military has this idea. You cannot go to any Navy school and they'll tell you, you know one thing, when you see the enemy, raise your hand. They don't teach you things like, why? Because they don't know it. Because it's not revealed to them. Because they are not Christians. Because they are not born again. Because they don't know God. 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 They know war. They know battles. They know guns. They know military. They know submarines. They know uh, all kinds of F-17 F, F, F bomber and all of that falcon. They know all that. But when it comes to things like this, which surpasses human knowledge, they have no knowledge about that. I decree you will prevail in Jesus' name. So, through the word of God, we experience victory, supernatural victory over the attack of the enemy. Through the word of God, which is our custom, which is our vehicle, for exploit, we, we shine over darkness, the powers of darkness. I'm telling you, the word of God is like, this, this, um, um, Psalms 27, the Lord or the word is my light and my salvation. And you know what David says, whom shall I fear? <laughs> That's an exploit. Show me the lion that needs to be afraid of. Show me the bear when the Lord is my light. <laughs> is that not beautiful? He, he, he asked the question. He was asking, show me in the world when the Lord is my... I mean, people are doing construction on the road. They have this beam, neon, massive light. That's their own light. <laughs> I mean, we're in the building now. I mean, the, the light is all there. They will say, that's not my own light. Now, don't forget that the Lord is the one who created the sun. So, the light of the sun cannot be equal to the Lord. Because the creation cannot be equal to what the, to the creator. And so, if you cannot even confront the sun, which is a sun, one particular sun to our home planet, and we have billions of of such planets that has their own personal sons according to science. How much more when the creator of the universe is now your light. My God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You will do exploit with this. This is an exploit. So the man went with this understanding to confront Goliath. That was a secret. It's an exploit. Up to today, we are talking about Goliath. Up to, to Goliath and David. David and Goliath. David and Goliath. David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Why? The Lord is his light. Goliath was an enemy. The lion was an enemy. The bear was an enemy. See what David did to cut it off. Now, you got an enemy. You got a fi family Goliath, financial Goliath, Academic Goliath, business Goliath, you have Goliath external, you have Goliath internal, and then you are losing the battle. It's time for you to know the Lord. It's time for you to know the Lord. You don't only have Goliath, you have the bear, you have the lion. It's time for you to know the Lord. You don't only have the bear, the lion, Goliath, you have the Philistines that gather. Immediately David was anointed. The Philistines gather to finish him. What has he done? He was anointed. Ah, la do look up and Allah. Oh, they, now listen, they can finish you immediately. You get married. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Immediately you graduate. They just finish you. Immediately you have a child. They just finish you. It's to teach us a lesson. This man was doing his own thing. There was no problem. But immediately the oil was on his head. A lion came. Ah, after the lion, the bear came. 
It was to kill the boy. Then Goliath came. Ah, uh ah, -uh, what's going on? When the Philistines gave me place, ah, uh, that David was anointed. Second Samuel. They gathered together to fight him, to kill him. When they heard that he was anointed, you, they, they get you anointed, you begin to dance all around the place. You don't know that. No, that's not the time. That's not the time. It's a second Samuel. Look at it for me. When they heard that he was anointed, they gather. Now, let me even say this. Now, the Bible says, surely they surely gather together known by me. Anyone that gather together to destroy you, oh my God, to finish you, oh my God, to put you to shame, by this grace, they are brought to shame right now in Jesus' name. Second Samuel chapter 5. Now, look at it. When the Philistines had <laughs> that they had anointed David, that she has, she's married. Hmm. <laughs> that he just got a job. <laughs> That's why people, many times, the testimony they share last is the last. Anytime something new happens in your life, you need to know God more to sustain it. The anointing you need as a single man is not the anointing you need as a married man. It's not the anointing you need when you become a father. Vice versa. To the woman too. What has he done? We always think that anybody that has this uh, Philistines gathering together against a person, he must have done something bad. That is erroneous. No. As a matter of fact, that is why the enemy will gather. As a matter of fact, it is because you are not anointed, you don't have God. That's why the enemy is not gathering against you. Why? Satan cannot fight Satan. Every kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. When they heard that you have a future, when they heard you graduate, when they heard you got a job, when they heard you bought a house, when they heard that something great happened to you, they gather, they gather. All the Philistines came up to seek David and David heard of it and went down to do it. They didn't come to to bless him all. No. Verse 18. You think they come to bless him? The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Uh -huh. And David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up to the Philistines? That is the power. A man that said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Go to the light. He went to the light for exploit. Papa, Papa, the enemy has gathered though. The enemy has gathered though. You don't just go anywhere. You can have a plan, but all your plans must be subjected to the light. Shall I go up to the Philistines? Specific questions. Second question. Will you deliver them to my hand? Specific questions. Because even if I go up, would that be something that will kill David? Uh, specific answer. The Lord said unto David. One. Let me answer your first question. Go up. Relationship with the light makes you do exploit. Go up. Okay, now, when you say I should go up, I need second, I need answer to second question. I need answer. Papa, give me answer to the second one. Now, look at the answer. For I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. So, your knowing God makes you know the hand of your barrel before the barrel. Hey! You have not even met the Philistines, but you already know the conclusion, which will give you fortitude, which will give you confidence, which will give you faith, which will give you power. You know whether you go with 200, you go with 5,000, you go with 2 million, it really doesn't matter. The light already revealed to you that you are going to overcome. Why? He's going to be the one. He's going to be the one to deliver the Philistines into thy hand. I don't know how many people are watching me or hearing this. Let me prophesy to me, my wife, my children. In the name of Jesus, we are going up. The Philistines will not stop us. And without doubt, God deliver the enemy into our hands in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. Now, 
after this victory, the enemy gathered again. <laughs> In verse 20. I mean, you thought you need to go home. Because this victory has made David to change level. It's now promoted. Now, so you are promoted. Now you are making, you are proud. You say you don't need God anymore. You are coming late to church. You don't fast again. You don't pray again. No, you always need God. Because the Lord is my light in this dark world. This world is filled with darkness. David came to Baal Perazim. And David smote them there and said, The Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me as the bridge of waters. So David destroying them is not any big deal. God has told him. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. Verse 21. Look at what happened there. Verse 21. And there they left their images and David and his men burned them. Does that look like exploit? He looked like exploit. And the Philistines came up yet again. You know what I'm going to do? Let's just go. No! No! And they spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Verse 23. Verse 23. Now, remember what we did the first time. The first time, we uh, said, go up. I'll kill them. I'll deliver them to your hands. But the second time, you still have to go to God. Why? The Lord is my light. You cannot assume that the way we did it last year, last month, last week, that is the same way I have to do it now. The reason why you are doing it that way is because you do not have the light. The light in you has turned to darkness. The Lord is my light. It makes you to do exploits. When David inquired, I mean, some people say, ah, is it not the same Philistines? I don't need to inquire from God anymore. I mean, this is a waste of time. I mean, why do we have, I mean, the same Philistines? Let's just do what we did the last time. <laughs> when David inquired of the Lord, he said, thou shalt not what? Go up. But the first one says, go up. He said, you need a relationship with the light, oh. Especially for those who like to copy other people. You are in IT. I must be in IT. You are doing this. I have to do it. David cannot even copy himself. Talk less of David copying somebody else. <laughs> I mean, the product of many things we are doing is as a product of what we see others doing. Others cannot be our light. The Lord, hello, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord alone. The Lord alone. Nobody else. David and of the Lord. He said, thou shalt not go up. What a, what a, what a, what an obedient child. What a child that is not fixed on dogma. What I would do is what I would do. Don't go this time. Okay, so what do I do? But fetch a compass. Can you give me another translation? Fetch a compass behind them. Go behind them. I, I, I know, I know the, your enemy very well. I know their weakness. They have mastered you. That's why you cannot pass your exams. Because they know you always read at 3 a.m. Hmm? They know your secret. But I, I know better than them. So instead, look at it. Circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. Ah, now, another thing. When you hear a sound, like marching feet in the tops, because I will send my angels of the popular tree, be on the alert. Did you see how God, who is the light, is giving David even detailed secrets to win the battle of life? Lord Jesus, help me. I receive grace from you. I'm going to do exploit from you. You know, there are so many things about exploit. Even regarding cathedrals you want to build for Jesus. All this, how to make money. It's, it's an exploit. God has the answer. God has the answer. But we don't know God. We don't sit down at his feet. Knowing God does not mean you are, you are spending one hour. It's not, that's, that's not what they call knowing God. You are spending two hours and three hours. No, that's not what they call knowing God. That's not the hour. Oh my God, my time is gone. And I've not even said nothing. My God. That's not the hour that Paul spent to know God. I wish it can be one hour, man. I mean, I'm telling you. You are spending how many hours to get a four-year degree? Now, excuse me, can you calculate that for me? I'm rounding up. 
I'm rounding up. How many, how many, how many, how many hours? Credit hours. For you, do you need for 120 credit hours? So what is 120 credit hours? Because you need to break it down. I don't know how they do that. I don't think it's based on hourly. 120 credit hours to have your bachelor's. So but what does that mean in terms of eight hours, three hours, whatever, you know, that you are going to spend just to become, just to have a degree in biology or to have a degree in physiology. Now, to have a degree to be in command of money or wisdom or knowledge or healing or anointing, you are spending one hour, 30 seconds. Huh? When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, be on the alert. That will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine's army. Now what happened? Philistine army. So David did what the Lord commanded. He will have died. He will have ended up becoming a pauper. He will have been begging for bread. He will have been squatting for houses. He will not have had any money. He will have not been married. He will have been put to shame. Ah, Carrie, are you hearing what I'm saying? He will have been put to shame. He will have gone backward. He will have failed. But the Lord and he struck down. They don't know the secret of David. They, th they, think David, they think David has power. They think David has muscle. They think David has all kinds. They didn't know that God was his what? Secret. He struck, the, and that was why he was doing what? Exploit. And he was not just doing exploit. He was doing mega exploit. He struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gaza. Now, if you don't know Jesus at this time, I don't know how you're going to make it, to be honest with you. I'm just telling you now. You cannot make it. You cannot. You can't. But God wants you to make it. Why? He's not willing that any perish, but a whole come to repentance. The Philistines are waiting for you. I would have loved to continue because I've not even started, but it's not a matter of just continuing. It's a matter of you repenting. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 told us, as some men counsel on sacrifice, but as long as it was not willing that any, now I don't care who you are, he doesn't want you to perish at all. No, he doesn't want the Philistines to destroy you. He doesn't want Goliath to destroy you. He doesn't even want uh, Mr. Beer or Lion or whatever. He wants you to make it. He wants you to shine. He wants you to reign. He wants you to go forward. But he cannot force it on you. You have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. In the book of Acts chapter 3, they say, what in Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 3? They say, what then shall we do? He said, but that all should come to repentance. And they are still asking, what do we do? And Peter will not slack. He said, repent and be baptized. And God is saying the same thing to you today. That you should repent and turn your life over to God. And he's going to give you the Holy Ghost. Is your heart being pricked at this word? God is touching you. The Holy Spirit is the one pricking your heart. Pricking your heart. Pricking your heart. Men and brethren, what shall we do? You have to repent. So you want to do that? You want to do that? I want you to say this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for forgiveness of my sins. In thought, in thought, in word and deed, I've not, I've, I've, I've been away from you. I've run away from you, Lord Jesus. But today, I have heard your word. I'm coming back to you because you are my light. Without you, I will be lost in this world of darkness. I can't do exploit. Without you. Because there is no exploit in the dark. And so, I receive you as my Lord, as my Savior, my Deliverer, my Helper. Jesus, come into my heart by your Holy Spirit. Take charge and take control. And I'll serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that prayer, you're blessed. Please contact us on those numbers. And it's not, fun, it's not funny. It's not something that is cajole. I like you to call that number so we can be of help to you. Or if you have any prayer request or anything you want us to, in any way you want us to serve you, we'll be willing to that. We have a lot of people that will be able to reach out to you. They reach out to folk, and then and then and God always answers our prayer. There was a lady that called all the way from, um, she called all the way from, I think from Bulgaria, because she had this message, and she needed a visa 
to come to America. She's been denied almost about three times and she needs to come and do some things here, family and all that, and they denied her. And she called and they told her that there is no way they can give it to her. And then they brought that to us. We prayed. I also prayed with one of my sons in the Lord. And I told him, call her. Because I prayed for her. Just call her, decree the word. Truly, he did. He called her. She went for the interview the following, that following week. And they gave her the visas. And that was a blessing. Many of those things we've seen. God turned things around. A brother or sister was barren. I mean, I think that the sister don't have a child. And the sister was about 50 something years old. And of course, the marriage is almost wrecking. Got in touch with that brother. That brother got in touch with us. We prayed. Now it's a story. They already have a child. To the praise and glory of God. Let me tell you something. God is working his purpose. God is doing his miracles. And you are set for one in Jesus' name. Let me pray for everyone. Father, myself, my wife, my children. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We hook up to your word. Your word is our bailout. Your word. I may know him, and those who do know their God shall be strong. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for making us strong, and they shall do exploit. Father, we thank you. Exploit a wedding, exploit in ministry, exploit in soul winning, exploit in soul winning in the nations of the earth, exploit in miracles, exploit in signs, exploit in wonders, exploit in our home, exploit in our family, exploit in the body of Christ, exploit in science, exploit in pharmaceuticals, exploit in medicine, exploit in government, exploit in peace initiative and peace studies and conflict resolutions. Ah! We are the one the world is hoping for. To, 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 to provide solution to the so many conflicts that is making brothers and brothers kill each other. Lord, we receive that grace. We receive that grace. Anyone now listen to me. Receive the grace in the name of Jesus. This year, 2023, there is one thing, if they don't know anything about you, there is one thing that this world will be reverberating about you, that you are a man or a woman of mega exploit in Jesus' name. Amen. So I pull up in a new truck, yeah Going to church on the sun and morning I call up on my friends, tell them come let's wash it We gotta give thanks to the Lord to For the Lord. all the big plans that we had growing up Came true, that's true Look at me now, I'm a winner Blessing steady flowing like a river Okay, I walk hard all day But the hand of the Lord make it easy all day All day, come rain, come sun All the blessings I be getting so much Take a look at me now, now. Look at where I'm living now yeah. Everything I need, I get it now well, I'm living now All the days of my life I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed In the day, in the night I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed Take a look at me now Look how well I'm living now Whatever I did, I get it now Look how well I'm living now Take a look
Nina. Look how well I'm living. Whatever I need, I get it. Look how well I'm living.